Good morning and welcome to NWR's Vantage Point Conference, where we're aiming to get behind companies with a quick sort of 101 pitch, uh, followed by more of an interactive Q&A session. I've got from the company Bruce Rogerson, company CEO. Uh, just before I hand it over to Bruce, um, feel free to submit questions through the Q&A panel at the bottom of the screen. We'll get to those post the presentation. But Bruce, I'll hand it over to you now. Thanks very much. Thanks, Simon, and thanks for the opportunity to present at the at the conference. So I'm uh, here, yeah, uh, managing director, CEO, uh, one of the founders of the business, and and over the um, the last 28 years of uh, of Rubicon, we've built a differentiated offering um, in our core market, which is gravity fed irrigation. Um, yeah, we've got extensive industry knowledge um, that's. Um, that's clearly been built up over that time, and and uh, you know, you know, through through what is our our core market, our software is an absolute key for us. We've got a comprehensive software portfolio which which manages the operation of irrigation districts, their interfaces with farmers, and and then the way farmers manage their um, their their properties. That's been a massive investment and continues to be for us as we evolve that software. And our gates and controls and flow measurement technology, we've had to build, um, you know, unique products there around surface irrigation, and I'll I'll, I'll go into that a bit, that a bit. Um, that all generates. We've got a, a really strong corporate brand and product brands. You know, our our products and our solutions fix the problem of our marketplace, and we've demonstrated that, that now across multiple markets, and all backed up by really. Um, you know, intellectual property portfolio or patents and trademarks that um, that you know secure um, secure that um, that differentiated offering. So, um, you know, our, our business is about managing gravity fed irrigation, and that's taking water from a point of storage in a um, in a um, in a dam, all uh, through a network of rivers and canals to feed through to uh, farms, and then the operation on farms. So these types of networks utilise 50% of the water divert uh, of, of the freshwater use every year. So it's 50% of the world's water is diverted through these gravity-fed irrigation networks supplying water to farms. Um, the imposing figure there is from the water that leaves the, the dam or point of storage to the root zone of the crop in these manual systems, which are still predominantly manual around the world, you know, only 40 to 50% of the water that leaves the point of storage makes it to the crop. So that's that's as a result of substantial water loss in the distribution systems, um, inconsistent supply and inequitable service, making farm operations really difficult and leading to crop productivity losses. So yeah, massive problem, but it's a massive opportunity. And this is where our, our technology steps in. So when we roll out our solutions, farmers receive the water when their crops need it. So it's moving to an on-demand service rather than taking water when the, the government or the district can get you the water to your farm, you have it when your crops need it. We do that by precisely measuring and controlling the water from the dam to the farm. So at all points in the network, we have control and flow measurement, which means with our canal modelling and our control systems, we can equitably distribute water throughout the network. We get an even level of service across these massive irrigation districts of the world. And I've got a couple of case studies where I'll talk to that. And up to 90% distribution to the efficiency in getting the water from the dam to the crop. So just a couple of quick, um, you know, two or three, what the tech, uh, what the infrastructure looks like. This is a dam in Gold Murray Water or a pump station in Italy. These are two of our, our networks where we have, um, have solutions in place. And the first start of the network is we... Um, you know, we we control those. We then move through to the you know these big canals. Here's a canal in you know, near Griffith and Murrumbidgee irrigation. We large control structures, which not only um, accurately you know control flow, but very accurately measure. As we go further down the network, you know the range of products diversifies. Smaller, different scale gates, but all designed around having high high flow, low head loss. Um, 
which are critical factors for, for distributing through these networks. As we move further down the, the network again, we get into even more smaller structures which are delivering water to either communities of farms or, or individual farms. You know, big corporate farms in the USA and Australia can have, you know, really large metres and sometimes you're down to 300 or 150 mil pipes in some other parts of the world. But we have a suite of technologies which manage all that. Our business is about solutions, so it's not just the infrastructure that goes into the canals. We need all this to be a live network where every site talks to every site. And so key thing is terrestrial radio networks, um, and we have core skill set and, and IP in this area. Um, you can see in the top right-hand corner here, this is a 40-metre tower, 16 of those solar-powered towers we rolled out in Karnataka and India as part of our, our, our project there. Across our systems, we need these, um, you know, um, High, um, you know, high bandwidth data radios that um, that are that are, enable solar power, and then you know that's all about getting water to the farmer. So the farmer, um, once he's got the water to his farm gate, we have another suite of products which help the farmer manage his farm. Predominantly, you know, software around water ordering back into the system, irrigation scheduling, prediction, um, district alerts, and and uh, and usage and then the control devices are a different range of control devices which are suited about surface irrigation on farm all coming back to the control center so software as i said is the key it's the core of our business so this is the murrumbidgee control center control room at griffith in in northern new south wales where our software does all the network visualization the modeling the scheduling demand prediction from the customers uh, all the water ordering and account management from um, from the farmers in terms of when they need water and how their water accounts are going, um, and a whole heap of dashboards and information and the control technology which ties everything together. So that's a, a quick fly through of what our um, technology, um, how our technology in an integrated end-to-end -end solution delivers water from a point of storage through to the root zone of the crop. Um, with all that. So if I look at you know, our globalisation journey, Australia is 1% of the world's gravity fed irrigation in our space. So clearly, you know, our, our business grew out of the Murray-Darling Basin, predominantly where we delivered 20,000 structures, more than 20,000 structures over the last you know, 20, 28 years. Um, as I said, that's 1% of the world market. So we, to grow as a business, we've got to be in these big gravity air, uh, places of the world. And we've started that journey 2004 in China, 2000, uh, 2004 in the US, 2009 in China, 2019 in, um, in India. And uh, we have now invested to get our infrastructure from a sales market presence and um, uh, people uh, and um, technical presence to be able to deliver and, and secure work across these major gravity fit areas of the world. But it's not just a part being uh, having the, the sales and technical staff on the ground, production is a key thing. So if I go back five years, we had, um, you know, all our production was happening in Australia and we're exporting where we were exporting to the world, we're putting everything on boats. Um, we now have a couple of JVs in in China to service predominantly just that Chinese market. And we have a major facility and supply chain in both um, component supply chain in both China and India and a major facility in Hyderabad, which is the center for our global production, much closer to the global trade routes um, and able to push components then out closer to the customers. And the first of these is the USA, where we have um, an assembly and local production facility, which has got in components from India, China, and Australia to be able to build locally. So it's not, um, so this is another big investment we've been making. So if I give a couple of case examples, and one I like to go to is um, Mareeba in Queensland. So this is about a seven, um, seven, seven and a half million dollar opportunity for us. We originally, in the very early days of Rubicon, uh, did some work up here and, and then um, in 2020, we won a contract to, to put in the latest technology and system integration. So that's 125 automated gates and 157 farm outlets to automate uh, a large part of that district. Now, these what the district is saying is after 12 months, that technology has estimated water savings of 8,000 megalitres per year. 
and supports an annual increase of production of up to $50 million in crop value. So massive return on the investment. To put in perspective, for the, that 8,000 megalitres of water is four and a half MCGs full of water every year, saved on the back of a, you know, an investment in our technology and the related civils to be able to, um, to, to automate that. One final um, uh, 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 case study is our work in Karnataka in India. So this was our largest ever international contract. Um, automating um, 400,000 hectares of an irrigation system with 4,200 gates in rural Karnataka. Um, it's had a massive impact in, in this system. Um, you know, uh, farm productivity is, is being improved by up to 50%. Uh, we are equitably distributing water throughout those 400,000 hectares and many farmers are getting water um, at the top for the first time at the time when their crops need it in the history in the 30 year history of the um the, this the network um this is a contract of national significance and prime minister modi um visited the area and and um and inaugurated the system back in um, march this year which was it gave us huge profile in what is one of the biggest markets for us internationally so that's my quick 10 minute fly through simon of um of the uh, things, and I'm happy to uh, to take uh, questions. Great, thanks very much, Bruce. Um, if you could just give us a, a bit of an update with regards to where the India contract uh, is currently settling um, and expected timing around that. Yeah, so the um, uh, so our you know our, our core contract that that's there um, has um, you know is is coming to an end. We're moving into the maintenance and um, the, the support and maintenance phase. The extension to that contract is uh, is the right bank canal contract, which is on the um, so the the initial contract was the left bank canal of the Krishna River, and we're now on the uh, and now there's an equivalent irrigation district on the right bank. So this is the first stage of the right bank. That um, that was tendered um, in earlier this year. We were the sole tenderer. Um, and the government went through a process then as a sole tenderer, they wanted to retest the market to make sure that um, for, under their procurement guidelines, so they they retended again globally. Uh, we The second time around, we are the sole tenderer because we're the only vertic vertically integrated and, and it, but there's a lock-in because it has to integrate in with the first one. So that contract has closed um, and we're waiting the, uh, the award now. So they've been through their probity issues. Um, around the sole supply issues, and we're expecting, you know, that that contract plus several others to be signed imminently. Great, thanks. Uh, you, you spoke about the tendering there. Can you just run us through what the competitive landscape looks like uh, and how you come up against others? Yeah, so the the key thing for us is uh, how we, you know, why we can talk about these tenders and be so confident. You know, we are the only vertically integrated solution for gravity fed irrigation so as i put in those slides we go from the control devices in the channels the, con the communication systems that tie them together the flow measurement technology and the software so the software to manage the farmer demand and the um and the hydraulic modeling in the control system so so where we have competition it's really around uh people pulling suites of technology together and having to system integrate it um, you know, that that leads to, you know, when you integrate different technologies, it leads to finger pointing about who's responsible for what. So where we work with our customers, we, you know, we try and get the, the, specifica uh, the specification and their requirements to be, to be focused on an integrated end-to-end -end solution. When that happens, we really don't have a, a viable um, competitor at scale. So if the contract is big enough, then the pre-qualifications around experience and stuff around a, an integrated end-to-end -end solution really differentiates us from our competitors. All right, thanks, Bruce. Um, when we look at artificial intelligence, machine learning, um, can you talk through if uh, you're incorporating any of that into technology or, or future technology offerings? Yeah, well, that, I mean, it's a massive um, amount of data that sits in these networks. Um, so we have it, you know, data, you know, I think that we had a, um, it's, you know, the Gold Murray water system here in Australia, which 
is one of the largest um, real-time telemetry networks in the world. So that the power of that data is really um, in, in all facets of, of their business and where they're going. So, um, so, so our customers, uh, we are internally, but our customers are employing data scientists to really analyze the, um, the network and the, um, and the improvements of their operations. On our side, you know, um, machine learning and, um, and, you know, automating the control systems is, is, is part of modern product design. And so, yes, it's tied in, you know, like we, um, you know, our systems, uh, our control systems are continually evolving, you know, automatically to the, to the responses they're seeing in the systems. And, um, and, you know, that's, that's a key part. So, you know, machine learning is part of, you know, engineering design these days and it's a key part of our products. Um, you talked a lot uh, or some somewhat about tendering. Um, can you just talk to us about why you have such confidence? Obviously, there's been delays and, and dealing with big governments. Um, yeah, it's part and parcel of the business. Um, but can you just talk us through the pipeline and why you still remain you know, really confident, um, albeit with a, a miss this year, um, just on the, the near future and, and long-term future of the business? Yeah, so in... in in previous presentations, I've talked about, you know, our pipeline being, you know, in three basic segments, you know, the early engagement, you know, solution and development and pricing tender and contracts. So what we see, you know, we, you know, the early engagement is about engaging with customers on uh, what our technology could do and building budget pricing and then, you know, around putting a budget together for an investment in our technology and then solutions development is when we go to a level of engineering around, um, you know, working on the specifications and the, you know, the requirements around tendering. And the final stage is pricing tender contracts. Um, and that is that is where we we are now having a, a big build up in these contracts. Yes, you know, our, our customers are governments and timing is always hard to, to um, uh to manage, but we know in that pricing tender and contracts, we've got substantial future revenues tied up in tenders that are about to be issued. And you know, we're involved with the you know assistance with the um with that tendering and the specification process. Tenders are in the market about to close, or as in the case of India and many other plat and, and and the US and in and Italy particularly, tenders that have closed, where we're the selected tenderer where we're just in the final processes of sorting out the contract details where we can have a, a bankable project where we can start recognising revenue. So we haven't previously been in that position where we've got such a large amount of, um, of tenders in that phase where we're the selected tenderer, but we've just got to get through to a, 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 you know, a, an auditable contract or a contract where we can start, start work. And and just when you talk about a, a bankable contract and and recognising revenue, can you just run us through how that looks um, in terms of obviously there's not there's a, a lot of pre work um, committed prior to the contract yeah. sign, and just the timing around recognising revenue and how quick that is. Yeah, and it it does differ from contract to contract. I think one of the um, um so yeah in that spot you know so clearly you know in this projects part of our business we have you know have the these um these contracts and a selected tenderer needs the, you know, the legal paperwork and the final signs off and the work orders that come out of the back of it. And that's different market to market, but, you know, we've got to go through a process where we've got a, um, when I say bankable, it's a legal enforceable contract. So we know we're going to get paid over, you know, an impact of us in COVID has been a, a blowout in our inventories. Um, and that has been, um, you know, that has gone from sort of the 18, 19 million up to about 30 million with the supply chains. Uh, so we're in a position where we have a lot of a lot of componentry. And with some of these delays as well, we've had some you know spare fa factory capacity. So we have been um, pre-building solutions for some of these contracts that we're very confident in. Um, so we've been pre-building the products um, and componentry, which build up. So we're in a strong position when some of these contracts land to be able to soak up that work in progress and in inventory very quickly and be able to recognise revenue, um, get it to our customers and get paid quickly. Right. And, and just in terms of obviously the pipeline significant, all of these tenders and whatnot, 
without if they don't award them, uh, what's what's on the other side of uh, those governments in terms of yeah, basically they're uh, they're committed one hundred percent to these projects or. Well, they are. I mean, the um, I mean, behind this is those global thematics on on water and you know agriculture. You know, so if we talk about India, you know, Modi's commitment to um, you know, the Modi government's commitment to doubling farm incomes by twenty twenty five, um, that's tied to water. Um, the physical infrastructure doesn't get them there, you know, um, and that we've proven that now on scale in India. So, um, there, you know, the fact that we had the prime minister there, um, on site with thousands of people doing a high profile um, you know, announcement of what he called a you know, contract to national significance. Um, yeah, it's, um, and then, you know, um, yeah, if you go to the other markets, you know, as I say in, um, you know, um, USA, um, where we have substantial contracts with one of the largest irrigation districts in the, um, in, in the States, which is in a similar state where the contract, the tender has been awarded, it's just needing the, um, you know, the board sign off, um, the board is committed to this technology. There, um, you know, just that's on the Colorado River. You look at the water stress that's happening there. Um, waters are coming, you know, they, they're going to, for the first time ever, take water allocations off farmers. So all those political pressures um, are there. The water stress is there. And the known solution and demonstrated solution with us is there. So politically, we can't see this stuff um not happening, but the timing is what's you know what's difficult uh, for us to predict and has been. I think the key thing we're doing as a business is is really diversifying into ge multiple geographies. So as I say, you know, Europe will be a there'll be a major step up. But you know, I'm confident in our in our market in Europe and North Africa next year. We've got a Central Asian business now through a partner there in the RLC basin, which will be a contributor. We need um, we need uh, geographic spreads across these core irrigation areas of the world with stable businesses generating revenues and profits for us to, to be able to provide to our investors greater earnings, predictability and stability. That's uh, definitely what we want. Uh, Bruce, can you just talk us through, do you have everything in terms of, you know, product market fit and products um, down pat or is there you know, further R&D required um, you know, for future years and whatnot? How do you look at that? It will, um, yeah, on R and D is in our DNA. It's a big part of uh, of what we do. So our, our investment, you know, across both software and products, you know, will continue. So um, you know, the um, you know that's that's around you know in the software sense around um, you know um, cloud based deployment, software as a service, easier deployment into smaller districts because our yeah core software has been focused on large on-prem um, deployments for large irrigation districts. So evolving that to um, to cloud-based deployments, both for the large, because most of the large are now moving to the cloud, but also um, different models in there, uh, are different, easy to deploy for smaller districts on software as a service type arrangements. Um, moving into more of the and that's a market mark by market thing, but looking into the um, the water, you know, the water management account trading, that sort of stuff in, in different markets. So there'll be an ongoing de development in software. In the product side of things, um, larger gates. So as we're getting into these big systems around the world, um, you know, we, we, we have a requirement for larger gates, more unique, you know, there's some innovative products still coming through that, um, that will be, that we see markets for. And also on the smaller end, um, as we get down into places like North Africa and Asia, you know, the farm units are smaller. And so we can, we're can pushing both the, the scale and the technology and the products and software. Welcome. Thanks so much for the presentation, Bruce. And if anyone had any interest in terms of follow-ups, um, my email's at the bottom of the announcements and you can jump there. Bruce would love to chat. But thanks so much, Bruce, and thanks all for joining. Thanks, Simon. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for your time.